And let's go live now to Bundaberg. The Nationals MP Keith Pitt joins me. Keith, this is an area you've been watching very closely, the energy debate around nuclear versus renewables. The energy minister I spoke to him earlier, and he's pointing out that AGL, for example, doesn't want nuclear at its site, that it is heading in the renewables area. Does the coalition have enough sites to work with or companies open to your idea of, of nuclear for the future of Australia's energy needs? It's a big country, Kieran. Uh, and Chris Bowen, what a hypocrite. The Labor government's just poured nearly $5 billion into building the nuclear reactor in Britain, <laughs> not here, uh, to train the British people and British apprentices and Britain, British technology to then take that reactor and put it in a submarine in Adelaide, uh, which will then go around most of the capital cities with a nuclear reactor in it as part of our defence strategy. So the idea that we can't utilise them onshore, uh, I just think is wrong. Uh, never forget that Chris Bowen has provided incentives that are just extraordinary. Guaranteed rates of return, whether you generate or not. Uh, I mean, when does the welfare for wind and solar stop? When you look, look at the question of nuclear, uh, one of the criticisms is that you don't need 24-7 uh, peaking power in Australia. With, with renewables and our vast supply of renewables, you basically need things like gas, which you can turn on and off very quickly. Why, why does nuclear fill that gap when, at the moment anyway, the technology suggests you can't just simply turn it off and on with the ease with which you can do gas? Well, firstly, I support building things that work 100% of the time. If you're only building one generation system, that is much cheaper than building two. Uh, and all of this is about the response of the unit that you're driving. I mean, this is a technical argument, but that, that's just what happens. It's about how quickly you can get in fuel and get a response in the generator to deliver what you need. Intermittent wind and solar will always be unreliable. That, that is the reality. It hasn't been properly costed. There's 28,000 kilometres of transmission to go where people don't want them, and yet we can build small footprint nuclear that works 100% of the time at the last four, literally decades, uh, is almost indestructible when it comes to hail damage, for example, unlike solar. Uh, I just think it's the right way to go and it's being utilised around the world as we see in other countries. Is there a technology element to this that is, is proving effective in, in getting it up and going more quickly? Because it, previously it's taken days, if not weeks, to get some of those reactors moving. Uh, well, it's simply a matter of how quickly you put the energy in. It's just a big kettle. That, that It just produces steam. The only difference is the fuel source. Uh, this is how coal works. This is how gas works. Uh, sorry, uh, gas is, is different. It doesn't generate steam. Um, but these are pretty fundamental elements. Uh, it works everywhere else. I mean, South Korea has just built four units for around $22 billion US. That's over five gigawatts. That sounds like pretty good technology to me with a small footprint. It won't have the impact on agriculture. I mean, look at Victoria. They just hooked a report which said that some 70% of Victorians' ag land will have to be covered in wind turbines and solar panels. That is just extraordinary. The government's welcomed the uptake in EVs. Two-thirds of the electric vehicles on Australia's roads have been bought since the last election. More uh, super-fast power uh, charging units right around the country. They're going to double that network over the next year. Have you seen an uptake in your area? Kieran, if Chris Bowen was spinning any faster, you could use him to dig post holes. <laughs> At least he'd be useful then. Uh, this is just... It, it's not reality. I mean, my local area has about 70,000 vehicles registered. The uptake on EVs is 63. Uh, and the reason for that is it just doesn't work for the people that live here. Uh, if you want to buy one and it works for you, knock yourself out. But we're hearing reports now that they're virtually valueless uh, when you go to trade them in because the dealers would likely have to change out the entire battery system because they don't know what's happened to it over its operational life. So it could be dangerous. They just, they just don't know. Uh, and I know we, we're hearing from Toyota and Chris Bowen's using that for spin, uh, but the Toyota manager still said there's an enormous amount of work to do. It'll be extremely difficult. Uh, even AEMO says that uh, Labor's plans will require an increase of some 60% for peak demand. That's a 60% increase in generation, transmission and distribution. Can you imagine the cost? And why does no one consider the cost anymore? Uh, the people I know, if they could afford these things, Kieran, they'd be driving brand new Prados now and would have, would have done for the last 10 years. They just can't afford them. The news poll today has the analysis across uh, the first quarter. 
it shows some improvements for the coalition in the West and among younger voters. There is a, a view, though, being expressed that the coalition should be doing better given the various challenges that the, the government has faced. What does the coalition need to do to be competitive? Well, Labor was basically at high tide in every state apart from Queensland at the last campaign. And don't forget, New South Wales and Victoria are both going through boundary redistributions and they'll lose a seat each. So depending on which side of the ledger they go on uh, and depending on the impact on the marginal seats that either we hold or Labor holds, uh, that will have a very, very big impact. Uh, but for us, we need to be in the field on policies. We need to continue to demonstrate uh, why you are better under the coalition. And I think all of your viewers, Kieran, if they think back to when we were in government, uh, whether they are in better condition now in terms of the economy, their jobs, what their money and their dollars are worth, uh, I think every single one of them will agree. Uh, they are actually poor now. Life costs more. Cost of living is up. Rent is up. They can't buy a house. It is very, very different under a Labor government. Keith Pitt, member for Hinkler. Great to uh, chat. Appreciate it. This Easter Monday. Happy Easter to you. See you soon. Great to be with you. Blessings to you.